White supremacy. White people destroyed Egyptian monuments that looked too black. White people started separating Egypt from Africa as if it was two different places. White people started making Egyptians look white. And then when people started pointing out that Egyptians were in fact African, they started trying to make it seem like the pyramids were built by aliens because they did not want the modern white world to know how advanced the African culture was. Do you know why they won't teach us the history of Egypt? After you have shackled and enslaved a people, branded, castrated, lynched, burned, and tortured them, you called them three-fifths of a man, subspecies, an ape, a monkey, and a general inferior creation, how can we then admit that they are our teachers and the ones who gave us civilization? How can we admit that we descended from Greece and from Rome and that Greece and Rome stole everything, everything they knew from Egypt? Some of these things you might already know, but not everybody know, hence why I'm bringing it to the channel. So, let's go. Did you know that white people used to worship black deities? Negroes were first worshipped in Greece and Rome. White masses bowed down to black deities. The rites of Apollo were founded by Delphos and his Negro mother, Melanus, and the worship of black Isis and Horus were popular in Rome and the Roman colonies as far north as Britain. It was actually, in ancient Rome, it was actually common for the Romans to make fun of their own gods, but to worship and respect um, Horus and Isis, which, by the way, Madonna and Jesus. But we'll get to that. Because um, the worship of Black Isis and Horus uh, existed as far north as Britain, but eventually this evolved into the worship of the Black Madonna and the Black Christ. Christian whites also bowed down to them. Negroes, as was said, were deified in early Greece. They appeared as gods in Greek mythology. The chief title of Zeus, the greatest of the Greek gods, was Ethiopes, which means black. The earliest of gods and messiahs on all continents were black. We have found the black complexion or something relating to it whenever we have approached the origin of nations. The alma mater, the goddess, the founder of the oracles, the memnon, or the first idols, always black. The pyramids, by the way. The faces on the pyramids, they chipped the noses away so it would be less apparent. They were black too. Thus the oracles at Dodona and the Apollo at Delphi were founded by the black doves. Orisus and his bull were black. All the goddess gods and goddesses of Greece were black, at least it was in the case with Jupiter, Bacchus, Hercules, Apollo, Ammon, the goddesses Venus, Isis, Hecate, Juno, Metis, Circe, Sibyl were black. And the first gods in antiquity were black. Zeus, Apollo, Osiris, Isis, Buddha, Horus, they just keep going. In the Bible, the ancient days God was described as having hair like the pure wool. The earliest deities were woolly-haired Negroes. Their peppercorn hair was a sign of divinity. Did you know that the Pope's private chapel has a black Jesus in it? Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter. So I thought I should add a little bit of picture slide in there so you guys could see. You know, it's very interesting that they do this over there, but they promoted whiteness here. You don't find it suspicious? <laughs> They're not the truth about you that they don't want you to know about yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in as much as presently, there is still Black Madonna and Black Jesus images in the Vatican in Rome. Um, I have a strong feeling that that's going to change. I mean, it's changing already. They are changing most of these images. Um, yeah, because um, these people are getting more aggressive. They are more, um, you know, adamant about keeping the lies. Yeah, so it it is going to get worse. That's why we do need to know. So even though they change these things, we already have it here and we can pass it on to our children. We know how important it is for these information to be passed on to the kids, right? For those people that are going to say color doesn't matter, if you want to keep believing it doesn't matter, okay. But one thing I would say, it mattered enough for them to want to change it. If it didn't matter, they wouldn't change it. So probably you should put that in your mind, you know, when you're saying it doesn't matter. And also the truth matters. So do you care about the truth or you care about your comfort position? 
because I do understand that information like this can, you know, kind of shake your whole world. Yes, it shook mine too. And also we should think about what um, they've used the white ones to do. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to get out of you guys here and, and let the video play. In early Christian art, Jesus is almost invariably represented as black skinned. The Hebrews were dark skinned people. His feet were like burnt brass, Revelation. His hair was like wool, Revelation. My skin is black, Job. Our skins were black. They are black, Jeremiah. Look not upon me because I am black, Solomon. Joseph, the Jewish historian, wrote that Christ was a man of simple appearance, mature age, dark skin with little hair. And the earliest statues of the Virgin Mary, they're also black. Everything was stolen from Egypt. Do you know why they won't teach us the history of Egypt? After you have shackled and enslaved a people, branded, castrated, lynched, burned, and tortured them, you called them three-fifths of a man, subspecies, an ape, a monkey, and a general inferior creation, how can we then admit that they are our teachers and the ones who gave us civilization? How can we admit that we descended from Greece and from Rome and that Greece and Rome stole everything, everything they knew from Egypt. How to admit that? There's no room in a white supremacist psyche for black contributions to civilization or world progress. This reaches too far into the consciousness of the so-called objective white scholars of academia and their black skinned counterparts. This is like asking a Nazi to accept the Jewish origins of Nazism and of Hitler, if that were the case. They couldn't accept it if it were true any more than the white supremacists can accept the African origins of civilization, the African origins of Christianity, the African origins of science, the African origins of everything. Philosophy originated in Egypt. Math originated in Egypt. Theology originated in Egypt. Philosophy originated in Egypt. Letters originated in Egypt. Everything started there. They were as ancient to the Romans as the Romans now are to us. And that's what we don't really understand because we live now. We don't really understand that the pyramids are 5,000 years old and that the Romans only date back two and a half thousand years. Like really think about that because that's the world we live in, a world of lies. I'm reading from J. California Cooper's book, The Wake of the Wind. I am Africa. I am a place. I am a state of mind. Hundreds of years ago, my children lived free. We had our skirmishes within my shores, even small wars that did not disturb my great and sprawling land. We were not perfect, but we never lift our shores to seek to destroy or rob any other culture or people, to steal the fruit of their land or mines and leave the land and people ravaged. Nor did we seek to steal any people's love of themselves, nor tell other people they were ignorant savages and inferior while we were superior, as the white ones said to us. They lied so much and long they began to believe it themselves. They cried God with their mouths while holding a knife in one hand and a gun in the other, slicing and firing at vibrant life. They also brought with them other diseases, including endless greed, envy, and hate. Our nations changed. They killed for land, women, or gold, spreading their savageness to all others. And now they have influenced others. Anathema. Enough. How do we repay our debt to black people? I really want white people to think about that. White supremacy. White people destroyed Egyptian monuments that looked too black. White people started separating Egypt from Africa as if it was two different places. White people started making Egyptians look white. And then when people started pointing out that Egyptians were in fact African, they started trying to make it seem like the pyramids were built by aliens because they did not want the modern white world to know how advanced the African culture was. Why do you think they targeted Africa for slaves in the first place? This was all about implementing white supremacy. Take a look at what they did to Jesus Christ. That man ain't white, but they made him white and they forced that white Jesus onto people of color just to further perpetuate the white supremacist agenda.